Hello and welcome to A Day With The Cart Driver as we continue our 40 seasons in 40 weeks looking back at the decade in anime. How are you doing today? Oh, well, <laughs> I, I showered today. <laughs> okay. And that's good. Do you know what else is great? This is summer 2010 and do you know what that means? Shiki! Yes, you get to talk about... I'm just going to leave you the floor because this is... This is your baby. Ooh, pressure's on, huh? Hmm. Uh, I mean, Shiki might be my contender for anime of the decade, potentially. Hmm. Uh, I'm a, being a little hesitant because we haven't gotten that far into this so far, but I really love Shiki. If you're not, com if you are not familiar with it, and uh, unfortunately it's license lapsed fairly hmm. recently, so you might not be. Uh, it is a vampire story, and. It was adapted from novels. So the novels were written by someone who's inspired by uh, Stephen King's Salem's Lot, which is a vampire story about vampires that come in and take over a town. So guess what happens in this show? Hmm. Yes, vampires arrive and they try to take over a town so that they have a nice little stable of food. Hmm. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, the villagers, as people start to drop, become increasingly paranoid and start to turn on each other and you kind of get your classic you know it's interesting because in a way it's sort of like those horror stories where it's like oh no we're trapped in a cabin in the middle of nowhere and someone else one of us is the murderer type hmm. thing except you're in a village it's just it's not easy to get away from the village uh and yeah everybody kind of slowly loses their crap as the show goes on it's quite a slow burn horror story if i remember it it's like there's the first few episodes are very much like inducing the characters and you know things are starting to go down in this town and yeah and it's the sort of thing where it's like hmm things are happening that seem a little bit off but are not immediately no it's you know gee this person has anemia and they're kind of young for this form of anemia and then they die hmm. and it's things where it's people on the ground are going hmm something seems a little bit strange uh it takes a long time to work up to a bloodbath and when it does get bloody though my memory of it is it gets very very oh bad. yeah i mean it's certainly not on level with oh. blood sea that's just gross yeah yeah it's not like blood sea it's not like uh you know i was What's his face? Devil man guy over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like that, but it is a lot of blood. And, you know, there are meat cleavers being swung about. Uh, it, it's probably not for you if you don't like much blood. On the other hand, if you're thinking blood sea, no, not quite that either. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoy it because, well, I think it's a, an excellent horror story hmm. in a medium that honestly doesn't get a lot of excellent horror stories, especially not your slow boil types but mm. i really love it i think it's fantastic it was also the studio who did it daume i mean they'd done nothing like it before no. and honestly they really haven't done anything i don't since. know do they even exist anymore <sighs> i don't think they do if i'm being honest i don't know they were the sort of studio that was doing a lot of you know like in between animation for other studios efforts mm. um it's if they still exist it, they probably haven't done much in a while. Uh, but it's also the show that made me have a moment of studio. Yes, it's not like it's not important, but hmm. a studio you've never really heard of can sometimes just come out of nowhere and really hit it out of the park. But hmm. I love that show. But this was, this was kind of a season with a lot of horror. Was it? Well, yeah, because there's a lot of... Like... Well, there was... Oh, my God. Okay, so bullet time tits. Okay, yes. That, Not you, my kind of horror. If you want to but... call High School of the Dead horror... I think it definitely fits into horror, even it, if it's not the type I like. It's horror, but it's the schlocky, zombie, zombie fighting, tits everywhere. Oh, no, so I'm getting ripped apart. It's very much B-movie horror. Dead movie horror. <laughs> it's... Uh, I secretly quite like High School of the Dead... I don't know. It like this isn't saying much because I think the season is dreadful. But <laughs> I, I I've been meaning to go back to Shiki. I, I didn't like it the first time. Man, like stop. You're in luck. I have it on DVD and Blu-ray. Ooh. Oh, the I, really scary thing though is we still don't own a Blu-ray player. 
Uh, I, I just it, it moved too slow for me and I mm-hmm. got bored but it's one of those ones like well I should give it another go but yeah High School of the Dead is just schlocky stupid ridiculous horror action like girls standing astride on top of a Humvee like uh, with a samurai sword out swinging at zombies it is it is stupid as hell I mean doesn't it sort of encapsulate that we say bullet time tits yeah there was a bullet shot in between a pair of gyrating tits that uh, someone did the math and worked out they were moving faster than the speed of sound and therefore should rip straight off her body. Um, that showed some ridiculous boobs. Uh, but it's it's schlocky, it's stupid, and I kind of liked it. To be fair, I think not schlocky gonna and it. stupid probably defines... Okay, well, maybe not all of the horror that came out during the summertime, but... Like, Black Butler 2 is definitely the campier mm. edge. Um, it got a little more toward the serious edge toward the end. But Black... So Black Butler 2 is anime original material completely unrelated to anything that happened in the manga. Um, I never took Black Butler as being schlocky. It's very goth Victorian. It is. Black well, Butler 2 is pretty... Schlocky. I mean, it was just... It took the more ridiculous elements of the original Black Butler and really amped it up, which Mm. I thought wasn't a bad choice because I don't think the original Black Butler was all that good to begin with. Neither do I. Well, Um, I think it's okay. It was a long time since I've seen it, to be fair. Anyway, you know, if you you were bored by the little Shoda in the first season of Black Butler uh, and found his whole, like... I'm a very serious 10-year-old shtick, a bit dull, then you might find it more interesting to watch Black Butler, in which instead they have a blonde, well, I think they're like 12, who's, yeah, he, he's not boring. He spends most of his scenes just sort of flopping all over the place, screaming a lot. He has a spider tattooed on his tongue, because of course he does. Uh, what very... 12-year-old doesn't? And it's just... Yeah, it's, I wouldn't say it's good. Um, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much if I rewatched it. But as someone who didn't like the original, it felt, I don't know, I liked it at the time. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, this is nine years ago now. Oh, God. Uh, when we're recording, I mean, when we're this is going up. So, yeah. Like, some of these, I don't, like, again, I don't know how I go back to a lot of these, um, but speaking of uh, moving on to more horror, because there was also a cult academy, and we've been kind of talked about these in the previous ones, but it's the what's the name of that? Oh, time block? Anime Chikara. Anime Chikara, which I think I called the wrong name. Uh, uh, I think in the first one, the first I called podcast, it Anime Mirai. Yeah, yes. where we mentioned it, you called it Anime Mirai. Yeah, Anime no Chikara, uh, which was a noble effort, but this was the last one that aired in it. Yeah, they put her on hiatus after this. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last episode, but the story behind this was that a lot of the lessons they learned from this, because it's an Aniplex thing, yeah. they learned from this, went into uh, Madoka Magica. Mm. And imagine if Madoka Magica had been an Anime no Chikara thing. That, that time slot would have continued on for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's... You know, once again, I'll note, I don't think the time slot ever had anything that was fantastic. Mm. You know, I kind of liked what it was trying to do, even mm. if I didn't think every effort was great. A Cult Academy got very... Oh man, the final episodes of A Cult Academy. I know people who like it, but that show got didn't so... did they have a flying panther? Magical flying panther. It got so stupid. And the ending was just... To be honest, it's been so long, I only remember my feelings of just, like, anger and frustration, and this is so stupid. <laughs> Speaking of this is so stupid... Actually, no... This isn't the... So, Black Rock Shooter aired this season, but not the uh, TV series. That didn't come out until the OVA? This is the OVA. See, I've watched part of the TV series, Hmm. but I won't talk about that now, because we can do that subsequently. Do you remember... I never saw the OVA. Remember when everyone was really into that one Black Rock Shooter image? And that's basically what this was... So, do you know the story behind why Black Rock Shooter... Isn't it, like, from a song originally? It is a Vocaloid song. Vocaloid song, song. And then someone drew what's basically a kind of pseudo-Hatsune Miku wearing a black string bikini, 
with, with a, a sword. With a sword and a flaming blue eye. Yeah. And that was, and the, everyone liked that art so much, they're like, we should make an enemy out of that. And that's how Black Rock Trooper OVA came to exist. And the OVA is just like, barely, a th it's like there's nothing really happens in it. Isn't it just her fighting stuff? Well, it's like there's like a real life segment of her chasing after a friend, but then in the other world, there's like Black Rock Shooter walking through a bunch of checkerboard dystopic landscapes. See, I never saw it, so. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> look, there, there was, look, there wasn't much this season, so this one random OVA. You know, there was also actually a number of uh, movies that came out this season. Well, if I could keep us on the theme of, well, Black Rock Shooter wasn't really horror, hmm. but we were talking horror. Hmm. There's one thing you've got listed there that we haven't talked about that is horror. Oh. Loop Scares. Oh yes, that is horror, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a movie. I never watched it. I meant to because I've read part of the book. Um. I thought the... So, the book was released in English and it was a, one of those things I really, really tried to read it. Honestly, I can only conclude it wasn't handled that well in translation hmm. because I have read other stuff by that author that was not it was so stultifying and it just was bad i the movie's pretty forgettable as well i guess to be honest if you tell me what it's about i just remember that the final twist was that it was a big evil man going i like to eat children which was that which would felt like nothing like wolf? which because it went from like big brother to i like to eat children and it was like you had an interesting start and then kind of botched it. No one remembers this bloody movie anyway, Loops Gurus. I don't think it... I don't know if it ever got a legal release in the West. And if it did, I think it was several years late or like yeah. maybe Media Blasters did it. Anyway. Does anyone remember Colorful? Because that was a movie that... I remember. I can picture the um, the cover art, but yeah. I haven't watched it. That boy who said... I actually watched this one. It was one... Ugh. It was one of those movies that's like, I like artsy anime. I think Colorful is one of the best anime of the decade. And it's... it's Except no one's ever actually said that. No, but at the time... In it, fact... It felt like that. It felt like it was trying to be that. Yeah, but I'll also say this. From what I recall at the time that it actually came out, because it got a Western release fairly quickly, it was one of those things where people were like, well, it's got some ideas, but it's yeah. kind of flawed. I just, uh, I, I do remember the cover art because I did find that story. Yeah, the cover art is the kid lying in the, like, cough, coffin of flowers thing. Uh, it wasn't all butterflies? No, I think they're flowers. I oh, think might it's be butterflies. Dark. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I, a lot of this season I just don't remember. Uh, oh, but there is a movie I do remember, though. Uh, yeah, this, this is a movie that I, I didn't watch even though I watched. Anyway, why don't you just say it? I don't know which one. Are you talking about Fail Blazer? Yes. Why were you? Oh, you're probably going to talk about Arietti. Uh, well, that's, you saw Fail Blazer. Let's no, get I off. haven't. Oh, you haven't. So, folks, I didn't see Gundam Double uh, O. Double O until I don't know a year ago, maybe. Mm. And here's the thing: everybody says, "Oh, the first season's great. The second season, though, is terrible." Folks, I'm here to tell you that's a lie. The whole thing is pretty bad. It's just, it's very silly. It takes itself very seriously. There are a few characters that are great, um, but it's a really silly show. Mm. And I feel like it prioritizes its worst parts. But, um, you know, never mind, by the way, that one of the characters is named Lock on Stratos. But anyway. Rock on Stratos. So this is... Going back to... Let's go Here's back. the thing. So I finished watching the entire TV series. And it's like, folks, you're all full of shit. This was terrible. And I just... I was going to watch the movies. And I I couldn't make myself... I mean, I never watched... And I actually liked Gundam Double O. But that was... That was like... You know, I was but a wee babe. And I don't know if I liked it if I went back to it. And I also hated... Even back then, I hated the, the second half of the second season. So, yeah, I mean, I, I thought that's where it got really good and by really good. I mean, Trans Am, Trans Am, Trans Am, Trans Am. So in that case, I'm actually somewhat surprised you didn't watch Gundam Double O since it just carried on that being incredibly stupid. I mean, the thing is, though, after you've watched 50 episodes of something, even if in the final 10 you're like, oh, this is so stupid, oh, funny. 
It, you still aren't going to be there like, yes, I want to watch a two-hour movie of this crap. Can I talk about... I'm sorry. Uh, I'll let you talk about something that's actually good. That's actually good. Like, probably the one thing on this whole list that I actually genuinely... Like, I think High School of the Dead is like okay. like Akisora? No, I did not like Akisora. Okay, okay. That was that... Oh, God, that was this season. I really, really, really like Ariete. It may be my favourite Ghibli movie. Is it Pitasso between that and Porco Rosso? It's just, and I should watch more because I haven't still. I, I'm sure by the time we get there, I will have seen Marnie is there. You better have. You need to watch Marnie is there. Uh, Princess Kaguya. Yeah, I feel less bad about not seeing Princess Kaguya. I'll admit, but yeah, I really need to watch. Arietti I think is. You're going to have people with the pitchforks again for that <laughs> comment. Arietti is an ad- a, a adaptation of the English book The Borrowers, which is about little people who go into human houses and take little things that they've left to one side and then make stuff out of them, like take a thimble and now it's my cup, etc. Um, but more than, and it's set in kind of like late 19th century England and it's some sick kid out in the countryside and it's very much about the bars are all dying as a species, but they don't, they don't quite realize it's about the death of an old life, the death of, it's, of it's because the kid's dying himself and he's realizing what he values in life kind of thing mm. but he's also this kind of very much under the surface under this very fantastical ghibli story mm. which is kind of all ghibli but this one worked for me in a way other ones i like they all well no because ghibli shows do tend to work for you but this one worked for me and on a different level mm. I, and i find the and it's it has all the Ghibli magic of going through just these wonderfully drawn se- sequences and combining with the music as they move through the world and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I think it was the ultimate message of it and the kind of themes of it, not message, but more themes of it that got to me more than I think any other Ghibli movie has. Again, apart from Porco Rosso, those two. Uh, looks fantastic. It's And it's for kind of forgotten in um, the pantheon of Ghibli because it's not Miyazaki or it's, that, oh, it's the new guy who ultimately... Because it's not Miyazaki and it's not um, Takahara. I forget his name. He's a he's the young kid. The uh, young kid. I don't remember his name because he cause, yeah because he also did when Marnie was there. Mm. Uh, and and uh, as I said, like the neither of those movies quite did it in Japan or indeed in the West. I just well I never saw Ariadne, but that's partly because when it came out where I was living at the time, the nearest theater that was showing it was a two hour drive away. I would happily watch Ariadne again. It's... We don't, maybe we should watch the stuff that we actually own first. Yeah, then. true. We I, have I, Marnie, I own... we have Princess Kaguya. Yeah, we should watch them first actually. But yeah, and I know that's an unpopular opinion to say Ariadne is your favorite Ghibli movie, but I really, really love that movie. There's some joke to be made here about having, ew, ew, it, my favorite isn't the one that all these other people would, I'm just giving you a hard time. Yeah, um, I, my favorite anime are Code Geass and Death Note, like come on, <laughs> you can hardly call me like, oh, I'm some elitist who doesn't like the popular stuff, uh, yeah, but like, there wasn't much else this season. Well, yes, because I'm now looking at the list of stuff that we've tabbed. Um, and most of it, it's like, how do we go from a heartfelt conversation about something that was, you know, really worked for you and it was nice to, God, it's a whole slew of crap. And um, the- not everything. I mean, there's a couple items that I would like to mention uh, that were quite good, but admittedly the list we're staring at now is, oh, you know, such, lights of, the, SS. such lights of the genre is Amigami SS. Mitsudomoe, Cat Planet Cuties, Blessings of the Campanella. Do you remember when Amagami SS came out and then the, there was the a knee pit, knee pit sniffing? Yes. Oh my god. Wait, I thought he licked it. Did he lick her knee pit? Yes. Oh, I didn't... There's I, also some weird shit involving school bathing suits. Yeah, Amagami SS was like the weird fetish anime, basically. Yeah, and there's the one that everybody was like, oh, I love that one, Sex Hair. Which was just a girl who had rumpled hair. I know, but it was pretty great hair. Look, I'm just saying. Look, I'm just saying. (laughs) 
super sane. You know, Cat Planet Cuties, which is people Look, got angry over the name when they translated to English. And yeah, it's like, that name is fantastic. Like, what were you going to call it? Let's play! No, no, you weren't. Because no one would fucking buy that. It was an Asobio. Was... No, it's Asobi ni Ikuyo. Asobi ni Ikuyo, which is like, that just means let's play. Like, are you going to call it let's play and people will mistake it for, you know, video game? I mean, they. I don't know that they would have at the time. But... Yes, that was annoying. Anyway, the point is, so Cat Planet Cuties, that stands out on a shelf. It's terrible, but that's why it's great. And Mitsu Domoe was the one where they drank piss in the first episode, or was it the second episode? And there was wait, the... aren't we getting some? No, Mitsu Domoe was definitely the one where they where they drank. No, that she poured piss in her eye. What? Yes, there was a girl that she thought it was Look, her. I didn't watch that. She didn't have her glasses, and she wanted to like uh, put contact solution in her eyes or something, or like eye droppers, but she picked up the piss instead. Yeah, I make that mistake all the time. I know. Mitsu Domoe was kind of. You know, I mean, this was also a season which Strike Witches 2 aired, you know. God, does anyone even watch Strike Witches anymore? They're making a new one. Oh, God, There's a new right. one in 2019. It may even have aired by the time this comes out. Oh, lucky us. And then there was, like, weird OVAs, like Aki Sora, which... Is Aki Sora the one where it's just, like, siblings fucking? I mean, he's fucking his siblings, yes. Yes. Wait, he's, he's multiple? Also, what? Does he have multiple? You've, he has two sisters. You've seen this one. Yes, I have. Yeah, you see, you watch all the classy... Well, excuse me. I'm not the one who watched Knee Pit licking the animation. I didn't actually see that one. Yes, Akisora, he has two sisters, and at least in the OVAs, there's nothing implied. I want to say in the manga, they do imply that they're not blood-related, but I don't think they do that in the OVA. Uh, Wusses. He he bones his... Okay, I shouldn't say he bones, because it's more like... So, in one episode, his older sister is like, Yes, I seduce you. Yeah, sex. Okay. And he's kind of like, what? Oh, that feels nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see then, this is a very intelligent show. And then, in... One of the subsequent episodes, he has a twin sister. Oh, so they must be blood related. She's his twin. And well. she's upset because her friend who she has a crush on has a crush on her brother. And she just goes off like to total yandere land. And she, I mean, she rapes her brother and then threatens to cut his dick off. She's like, oh, it's so unfair that just because you have this, you can have her. Yeah. Um, in the stuff they don't adapt, or maybe they have by now, but at least in this, um, they don't adapt the bit where then he meets some other girl and somehow ends up in an orgy. So you're just saying, you know, is, so what which saying, happens all the time to fifteen-year-olds. So what you're saying is you should definitely fifteen-year-olds. Well, yeah, they're all kids. Oh, fucking hell. Anyway. What you thought they were college students? That's only in the American release, okay? In the college students. That's what Henzemi's about. Okay. Henzemi. Talk about Henzemi. Henzemi is, was a short OVA about a bunch of college students who are studying like... Abnormal psychology, isn't abnormal it? Abnormal psychology is what it actually stands for. But basically they're studying like the weird... Basically it's like, what weird fetishes do people have? And it was... Gee, did they study the ones from Amcom? He says. <laughs> no, we we're talking weirder. We we're talking people who... Oh, God, there was some weird stuff in that show. I can't even describe, but... Wait, you don't think those kids in Amagami SS... Look, if you're licking knee pits at 15, what the hell are you doing at 20? I just... I remember some person writing a post about watching that on a, on a, on a public train and it being like... And him getting weirdly into it because it was weirdly into the idea. Yes, it was an amazing uh, blog post. And that is the kind of fetish that people in Henzemi are studying. You know what I mean? <laughs> I actually have no idea what you're trying to say. Uh, the fetish. The fetish of watching pervy anime on a public transport. Oh, okay. Yes. It was a strange, weird little thing that the TV series later on that came out didn't quite recapture. I'm not sure if I went back to it now whether it'd still be like, this is weird and I'm kind of into it. Also, the weird blobby designs, which I liked. I'm not going to say know, it I was good. I always mix it up with, um, you were being summoned as Azul-san. 
They are very different. Yeah, I, I don't know why they connect in my brain. Azazel San has the lady who grows six boobs. Because they start doing a I chant and was... she turns into a cow. Oh, so basically it's Bible Black. Oh, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yes. Bible Black, the second most popular hentai on Mal. One thing that we've been doing with these, um, thing, these uh, podcasts is if something aired in 2009 but finally ended this year, we get to talk about it now. Yeah. So that is why we get to talk about one of another series that you actually like. Oh, like yes, I liked it a lot. Uh, you may or Patissier uh, finished this season. It was a 50-episode shoujo series following the exploits of a girl who thinks she's useless, finally discovers that she has a talent for something and ends up at this fancy uh, patissier school. And, I mean... Ah, so you mean it's like Food Wars. I'm so offended you even suggest that. Anyway, really it's all about a girl who goes from being like, oh, I'm really nothing special and I have no talents, and but that's okay because like my sister is talented, so it, that's cool, to a girl who realizes, oh, I'm capable of doing something if I try. Hmm. And, you know, that's nice. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of food shows but this one really worked for me this is it's a shoujo like a young girl shoujo yeah it's like, the same audience i watched precure nearly maybe yeah, a teeny bit similar, older similar maybe a touch older like i think i'm trying to remember what manga or, or what magazine the same audience as sugo chara maybe sugo chara um like 10 12 yeah yeah that age mm. although i could see eight year olds watching it too yeah it's a really nice show. I also appreciate the time just having a show that I was watching consistently every week for a year that I pretty much enjoyed on a consistent basis. I'm not saying every episode was great, but I at least knew that if I tuned in, I was going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot to be said for that because at this point, even back then, that was a pretty rare thing for me to have that sort of thing that you can watch weekly for a year or more yeah uh if you uh, you know it's you can actually watch it legally again because high dive picked it up crunchyroll mm. had it and it was a surprise hit for them mm. i do remember that yes i do remember that as well uh, i really enjoyed it yeah there were a couple of other long running things i don't think either of us watched hitman reborn no hitman reborn is one of those things that it's like an alternate universe in a sense i know it's there I know it has its huge fan base. My sister was really into it. I know it exists out there somewhere in the mist, but I genuinely have no idea what any of it's about. It follows the same, it's like in the same category with things like D. Grey Man. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yes, I can sense that, but it's like, ah, this is this impenetrable world. Hmm. It seemed like it was very popular amongst uh, female fans. Oh, I think it had loads of yaoi shit going on. Oh, loads. In the fandom, I mean. Yeah. Um, there was also Kiraman Zoo. You'll have to tell me about this because I don't know anything about it. So, Kiraman Zoo was actually made by um, Shoji Kawamori's studio there, Satellite. Hmm. I want to say Kawamori was involved. Uh, Kiraman Zoo was a 50 episode series, children's series. You know, I'm not sure if it was a shoujo or shonen because there were some elements of it that could go either way. Um, and it's kind of a magical girl slash boy shows because you have these three sisters and then they're two friends who are boys, one of whom is kind of dorky and the other whom, of whom is just kind of annoying. Uh, and they end up finding transformation devices and accidentally transforming into basically smaller versions of themselves that have an animal theme hmm. and they gain the abilities of the animal that they've ended up transforming into. Although, I mean, if you look at the outfits, it's not like, oh, that girl's a dog. Well, I mean, <clears throat> yes, but she's not furry, okay? Um, For shame. Not, no, I didn't say she wasn't a furry, she's not furry. Those are two different things. Although I don't think she was a furry either. Uh, 
and they solve cases. It's pretty low-level stuff for the most part. They're not fighting too many battles. Mm. There is a villain who's this girl who she becomes a bat girl. She also has a weird amount of cleavage for a 10-year-old. That's what I mean when I say I'm not entirely sure what the audience was. And yeah, it's it's not exactly gripping stuff, but it was fine. It has mm. a weird OP. I do remember that. It's something about crabs. Okay. Um, and it's like, yeah, now I wish I'd looked at it before I talked about it, but I'd forgotten that part. Hmm. So it never got licensed, and I don't think it ever fully got subbed, because I know I watched a good chunk of it, but I don't think I finished it, because yeah. I couldn't. It finished, well, it ended this season. Because um, <sighs> there was not... Oh, there just wasn't much this season, was there? But what there was was good for me. Well, Shiki, Yumeir Patissier. Yeah, well, ah. Yumeir Patissier cheating a little because it did kind of carry on into this season. But yeah, and there was like Arietti for me, but it's in terms of TV anime. Yeah, it was kind of a light season. I think this is one of the worst seasons. Like, there's maybe two other seasons out there I would consider worse. Actually, I'm not even, and even that's kind of like a tie. Is the season, I think it's like winter 2014. It was one that had the Mau Mau Yusha. Because there was nothing. That's it. I didn't, I think the only thing I finished was Inferno Cop. Um, and there was like another, there was like another scene. Like, I think the one that just passed maybe where the only thing I finished was Honda Sen. Well, I guess it sort of, this sort of starts cracking at though. What is a good season? And well, we yeah. have slightly different ways to define that. Because to me, the fact that it had... Shicky. Well, yeah, this is purely from a yeah. selfish standpoint, which is, did I like much anime from this season? No, therefore it was crap. Yes. Oh, well, at least we've defined that. Yeah. Anyway, though, and that, that is the summer of 2010. Next season is a lot busier. Um, I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about. I'm going to have to look at what I heard again, though. Because it had Ori no Moto. I didn't want uh, we'll Alright, we'll see you again, folks. See you next time.